And then there were two. One XFL team is undefeated, and one XFL team has yet to win a game as we head into the second half of the season. The D.C. Defenders now 5-0 after a 28-20 win over preseason favorite St. Louis. And the Orlando Guardians, they are the only winless team following their 35-32 loss to previously winless Vegas. Let's bring in Reed Johnson of the Mark Cast. You can follow him right here on YouTube, the underscore Mark Cast. Also, same on Twitter. Uh, Reed, we are here at the halfway point of the XFL season. If it's a midterm time or report card time, I think it's easy to give the A or A plus to DC and you give an F to uh, the Orlando Guardians. But I think there's a lot of potential there, you know, in the middle of some very good grades, some passing grades. Uh, including your Seattle Sea Dragons and, uh, you know, my St. Louis Battle Hawks, who suffered a couple losses here. But, um, I mean, I think we're starting to see now when you hit this midway point, Reed, see if you agree with me here. When you hit the midway point, you start to see the best start to move up and the bottom is going to be the bottom. Yeah, I mean, so first off, tremendous we've gotten to this point, right? Because And <laughs> I don't... And, you know, and my show is built a lot on, you know, being critical sometimes. And I do get people on there. Hey, you know, just be happy. So, yes, it's absolutely a testament. We've made it now through five weeks. You know, we're approaching the second half of the season. Uh, You know, I kind of go minute by minute through this. Uh, Sometimes I'm underwhelmed. Sometimes I'm overwhelmed. I think I'm uh, adequately whelmed by the season (laughs) thus far. I don't think I'm either over or underwhelmed. Just the right amount of whelm. I, I, I get that. We, when we look at, I, I think in the XFL North, that second playoff spot is, I think it's up for grabs. It's, I think it's Seattle. I think it's St. Louis. Um, when you look in the South, I mean, from what we're seeing now, again, as you said, you take it minute by minute, but what we look at right now, it looks like it's going to be Houston and Arlington because San Antonio, I mean, they've had injuries. They've tried to reshuffle things and change coordinators and everything. And then, you know, Orlando obviously is kind of cooked. Is that how you see it? Yeah, it, it's curious though. And I, you know, we had Mike Mitchell's does his weekly reports on XFL News Hub. He was on our show last Friday. You know, Houston looks really good here. Uh, they obviously just uh, suffered the loss to the Seattle Sea Dragons. I was there at Lumen Field on Saturday, or on, a, I guess it was Thursday, that, that late Thursday game. But, you know, they're starting to play some competition now. They're not looking as strong maybe as people thought. Arlington really suffered, especially this last weekend. San Antonio has really suffered. The South is really weak. I think Houston looks better because of the weakness of the other three teams. But, you know, they're playing the defenders here coming up. We'll have to see how that goes. I mean, that could be the championship preview game, but it's going to yeah. be a test. You know, we saw Houston here lose. Seattle, you know, did you turn the ball over three times? And, and we <laughs> Houston barely, like, wasn't even, it wasn't even close. It, scoreboard looked a lot closer than it was. For Seattle to be that dominant of Houston at home was pretty remarkable for me. I didn't like Danucci, you know, seemed to get really angry at Josh Gordon. We were obviously there. So, yeah. we're, you know, you're kind of watching the body language. But I watched back and watched on the broadcast. I thought that was really weird because I thought Danucci's, his whole thing is I'm the cool guy, right? The very calm, collected. You know, he's kind of a hip guy. And then you see him out there yelling for Josh Gordon to get benched. Like, felt very weird by, you know, misrun by Josh Gordon on that route. What was the vibe there in Seattle? I mean, you know, we it's it was it was a Thursday night, kind of tough for as far as like uh, uh, attendance goes. But you know, you were there. What was it like? Management thought, and, and rightfully so, we can go back to St. Louis. You know, flip the switch. People were there, passionate in 2020. We had the two big sellout games. You know, we're getting ready to. They were opening up. You know, to do the third home game there back in 2020. I think they thought they could do the same thing in Seattle. There's been no marketing here. I think our team's social media has been fantastic, right, online. But if you do not exist on Twitter or Instagram, you do not know the Seattle Sea Dragons exist in Seattle. All three home games so far have been up against the Kraken games. The Kraken, we, we were third. Now we're fourth in the Pacific in a wild card spot in the NHL playoff. This is a crack in town now. And I think that management maybe overestimated just, Oh, we just slip it back on. We saw what happened with San Antonio, right? Good. The first week. Right now we come back here. They were down 11,000. I believe people here the second week, uh, Seattle, reported attendance was 9,000. It did not feel like 9,000 was there. I've had reports from uh, reporters in, in San Antonio, the same thing. You know, we reported with Mike uh, Mitchell on our show, that about 120,000 supposed budget has been set, spent for marketing, right? Which uh, feels about right. Cause I haven't, I haven't seen a lot <laughs> right. and you know, it, it's, 
we, we've got these games now. That's why, you know, I kind of go back and forth day by day because we're here up against March Madness. I'm terrified to see the ratings for this week. We've had some really late games, uh, really yeah. late, not good games. Like we had last uh, Sunday with our Renegades versus the Brahmas. That was not a good game. Not a good time slot. Not a good crowd. Not I mean, it just was not a good game. But, you know, you bring up ratings. Now, as we record this, we have not gotten the week five ratings yet. But we, if we look back at week four, Reed, uh, Houston, Orlando was on FX. That was about 400,000. Uh, Seattle, San Antonio, also on FX, about 343,000. Uh, on ESPN2, you got your higher numbers with St. Louis and Arlington, uh, 572,000. DC, Vegas, 691,000. Um, I, and I, I think you're right. I'm almost ready to just kind of throw out the ratings as far as the next couple of weeks because of the NCAA tournament when the entire country actually pays attention to um, to college basketball. But I will say I do like the Monday night deal. Um, I think that could be that would be nice. And I also do like the fact that they've moved a couple of these games to ABC, although I don't know that you want the Orlando Guardians on ABC. But at least it's you're going to probably get some better numbers than what we've seen with some of these games on FX. Yeah, you know, with them, it's never going to be comparable 2020 to 2023 right. because it was a totally different network clearance back then. You're still yeah. going to get people and you get pro football talk or whatever. All these places want to post about XFL ratings being down, but, you know, lower expectations. Now, we've seen USFL here season two, prime good spot, Saturday, Sunday, a lot of NBC and Fox expectations are a lot higher for that. They performed good to okay last season and then it was trending down before the playoffs last year so we'll see you know as the known usfl hater here about uh, the race <laughs> but but there is there, there are you know there are lower expectations for espn2 at you know uh, what would it it was six eastern on the third or a six pacific nine eastern on a thursday than there would be right. for uh, nbc at 2 p.m on a saturday that the usfl yeah. would have yeah i just think you know i it, there's the curiosity factor that's always going to come into play with the, with a spring league, but it's going to eventually, you know, water finds its own level. I think that, you know, what we're seeing right now is going to be about average. I do like though, the fact that, you know, just talking to some people in the industry that were very close to it, they felt like these games should have been more on ESPN and ABC rather than FX. Cause I think that kind of, that ends up getting lost. Now, one thing we to factor in the ESPN plus numbers are not in there. So I do wonder if it would it would certainly be boosted. I think it would be some because, frankly, I'm tired of looking for FX on my cable. So I would just I, just out of habit, I turn on ESPN Plus. I, I you know I'm old, but I don't know that I would be the only one to do that. Um, as you go ahead, Reed. Oh yeah, I think they said it was like 25 million or so subscribers to ESPN right. Plus. So I mean, and obviously not every single one of them. <laughs> yeah, on. But I, <laughs> I do think that's a, that's a non-zero number that we'll never know. That, that that's that's a good point. You know, you as you mentioned, you are a, a noted USFL hater. It's pretty sad, but uh, we'll talk about just quickly. You know, the USFL kicking off 2.0 here, as we all hope. We take it uh, day by day. Your thoughts on? I like what they're doing here. Uh, well, I, I I'm going to say this. I have some mixed feelings on this with the hubs. I think um, having four hubs this year is going to bring maybe a little more local notoriety than they had in Birmingham. But what I hate selfishly is I can't go to Birmingham this, uh, this spring or summer and go down there and pay $20 to watch four games. But I do like, I do like the idea of the hubs. Um, I thought Canton was kind of a surprise, but obviously they had such success there with the, with the playoffs and the championship. They felt like a hub would work there. Or they just didn't have anyone else that wanted to say <laughs> that. Uh, hub and, you know. Hater, hater. <laughs> now I, Canton's good. I think Canton yeah. makes sense. I, you know, and I don't really care what teams you put there. I think having other things, people going to the uh, pro football, you know, hall of yeah. fame, whatever. And then games are going on. I think that makes a lot of sense. So it doesn't matter to me. You know, we rebrand the Maulers and you know, there it's like greater Pittsburgh. I mean, they can make whatever story they want. Hubs are good. I have seen training camps going on right now. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot more social media come out. I, I know that they have specific marketing people now for each hub and then social media people, I think freelance for each hub. So they're doing two teams a piece. And that does seem uh, you know, XFL and they have these dedicated teams for each of their, you know, eight teams, but I, it does feel like we're getting more USFL content right now. Yeah. Agreed. And I would say that I think both USFL and XFL is doing a really good job of, of uh, you know, the social media outreach, at least uh, that, you know, one thing that you'll find out, as you know, in PR and marketing, uh, social media is free. If you use it right, you're going to get a lot of eyeballs. 
XFL seems a little inconsistent. It seems like yeah. I've been, I've heard the directive is we want we want to retweet more fans and retweet more content and be more engaged. Some weekends it feels like it's good. Some weekends it feels like it's not. Uh, they were they tagged the wrong. Uh, they they credited. I think I saw today uh, they credited Devion Smith with the interception against the Renegades mm, right. uh, in the end zone here. Uh, I'm like so Devion Smith switched positions and teams. <laughs> <laughs> so like we're getting there we're getting yeah. there but like you said it, it's free like we we this is what we need to do if we're only spending 120,000 on marketing we need to uh let's utilize the free content we have yeah and i mean you have some credibility problems when you're doing stuff like that and uh reed johnson of the mark cast before i let you go i want to get your thoughts here i thought this was cool and you know the xfl and well a lot of spring football that has always been um i think for the nfl has been they kind of sit back they maybe not take it seriously, but they watch some innovations. The sky cam, a lot of people might not remember that came from the 2001 XFL, you know, 1.0. And now, you know, every game has a sky cam. And I thought when the Philadelphia Eagles talked about with uh, one of the things they wanted to do is what the USFL and the XFL does now with, you don't have to onside kick um, with USFL. It's fourth and 12 from the 33 with the XFL, the fourth and 15 from the 25, which is, fantastic the nfl pro or the philadelphia eagles proposal was a fourth and 20 from their own 20 um i would love to see this uh in the nfl and i think it's been an incredible innovation uh you think nfl will might bite on this i like it a lot you know it's funny how the other yeah, all slightly different right well it's right. With 12, whatever uh, you know in fan control football had the flip the field challenge that was also the weather right. you know we saw fourth and 15 with houston coming back against seattle yeah. right they got they got the conversion and then brandon silvers fumbled the ball but they they did can successfully complete to get the ball back to go in and it was i'm sitting there you know dorothy my wife said she was Wait, how come they get the ball back i said well you know it's whatever but I like it because it's easier than an onside kick. An onside Correct. kick is way, 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 way too hard now. You know, it's 3% or whatever of, you know, mm -hmm. successful onside kick. Uh, that number is probably incorrect, but it's a very low percentage. And I like, at least for spring football, let's give them something that's non impossible that we can try to get the momentum back here. Because we've seen a lot of the XFL games come down to the end and they're exciting. Yeah. Same problem with the USFL. Uh, slow starts to some of these games. So I don't care how exciting the finish is if we're not getting viewers there the whole time. Right. And that's a right. XFL issue and the USFL issue. Cause the, the Brahma's San Antonio era Brahma's Arlington game was, was at 12 to nine or whatever it was, but right. that was not an exciting game, you know, so you can have close finishes, but you need it to be good the whole time. Yeah, you're right. You got to get people to that fourth quarter. And I, with the night with nine points being a possession, teams really have not been out of it. You know, St. Louis won. They, they I think it was against San Antonio. They used the fourth and 15 uh, there in week one and was able to kind of turn it around. But, um, you know, you're right. I think you, you made a very good point, Reed. We've been around the spring football stuff for a while. We've made it to the we've made it to the halfway point. USFL last year had a championship. So, you know, we're, right now we're we're batting a thousand as far as spring football goes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's remarkable. And I do, you know, I've seen a lot. You know, I deal with a lot of the Canadian people as well, right. right? CFL media, USFL getting through the first season, that behooves, right? And the XFL, that, you know, seeing mm -hmm. all this and, you know, you can like XFL or USFL or not like, you know, be the hater or whatever, but having these leagues continue to work, it, it behooves each other, right? It was because of yeah. the success of the XFL in 2020, which is why Fox decided to get in business with the USFL here in 2022. It's because of the success of the USFL now that is further benefiting the XFL. They do go back and forth. Yeah, I think there are too many people that, um, you know, they're the naysayers on spring football. Then there's this kind of, a, it's, it's, a, it's weird to me, like there's this almost tribe of the XFL versus USFL. Man, this is, we are in the golden age of spring football. We have two viable leagues on network television, at least right now. Let's enjoy it. I've said before, if you think that Fox Sports or Rebber Capital needs you sitting online arguing about them hours a day, defending, <laughs> defending, you know, that that underdog that is Fox Sports, defending, right. you know, stealing. Uh, the, the XFL is coming in and stealing players and stealing revenue. Out, like, uh, it's crazy to me. You know, I support the players, support them getting opportunities. We've seen CFL people now, McCloud Bethel Thompson going to the yeah. USFL. Uh, yeah, we've seen, you know, Donald Sankey and those go to the XFL. Like, this is better for players. They're getting more opportunities. But no, neither of these leagues needs you, uh, ownership needs you defending them at all online. No, I think they'll, they'll be okay. Uh, Reed Johnson of the Markcast. Uh, I, 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 seriously, I, I, he's got a lot of followers, but if you don't follow him, get out there, check him out. It's, uh, 
I, Reed, as you said, I think it's all, everything but the NFL, and uh, you you do it all. Um, I know you do watch the NFL, but uh, the coverage is second to none, and I appreciate you taking the time here uh, to join me and talk a little spring football, even though you love the XFL and hate the USFL. <laughs> Yeah, I'm wait. I'm wearing my Washington Commanders hat. I'm waiting go. for that. I'm waiting for the sale this week. Maybe, maybe the team will be sold by the time this episode airs. I'll say if we, if we hit <laughs> if we hit another twenty thousand viewers on one of these YouTube podcast or what YouTube videos, we right. both need to quit everything that we're doing and just exclusively talk to each other from here on out. That, so. That's a deal. That first one popped, man. It, it did. So that's a deal. If we can hit about eighteen to twenty thousand. Exclusive. I'm retiring. Mark has this done. We'll <laughs> just right. go on. Yeah. You and me both. Reed Johnson, thank you very much, man. Thank you.